Hey guys, we're starting chapter four, arrangement of electrons and atoms today. I want you to make a note on the front of your notes, bring your calculator every day. So write it down, bring your calculator every day. This is gonna be a very algebra intense unit. So I want you to make sure that you know how to use your calculator. Here is our objective. I can describe the characteristics of a wave, such as wavelength, frequency, energy, and speed. I'm gonna give you the symbols right now. They might not make a lot of sense. Wavelength, we write as lambda. It's a Greek letter that looks like this. This is called lambda. Frequency looks like this. It looks like a cursive V. It's actually the Greek letter nu. Thankfully, energy is E. That makes a lot of sense. And speed, we're going to be measuring in meters per second, m slash s. We'll go through and talk about what each of those symbols actually is and means as we get through the notes. Okay, so where we kind of left off in chapter three, we had a puzzle about the nucleus. Rutherford understood that there was a small, dense, positively charged kernel in the middle that um, was exactly balanced by the electrons in the cloud, but his mathematical model said all the electrons should come crashing into the nucleus, annihilate all the matter, and nothing should exist, which he knew wasn't true, so he knew something else was going on. So looking at the puzzle of the nucleus, protons and electrons are attracted to each other because of the opposite charges. So opposite charges attract, like charges repel. We won't get into the physics of this, but electrically charged particles moving in a curved path give off energy. That means all of the electrons should go spiraling down to the nucleus and completely obliterate themselves. Despite these facts, however, atoms don't collapse. Rutherford knew that, and he knew that his mathematical model wasn't correct. Um, it was eventually resolved by his student Bohr, and those are like the models you drew in physical science or in middle school. And we'll get to those in a minute. So that's kind of where we are from chapter three. We're trying to figure out that puzzle. We're gonna change gears a little bit and talk about light. Light is a type of electromagnetic radiation. There are many types of those electromagnetic waves. You are probably familiar with visible light. That's what you see with your eyes. X-rays, when you go to the dentist, or when you go to TSA. Ultraviolet light, that's what gives you a sunburn. Infrared light, where do you all see infrared light? Or when have you maybe used infrared light before? Raise your hand. Go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, like night vision. Or like if you go to like a science museum and they have like heat vision, that kind of stuff. Good. And radio waves. Although you probably just plug in your aux cord into your car or connect via Bluetooth now. Yes, sorry. Well, 20 years ago, it would have made sense. Okay, electromagnetic radiation are forms of energy which move through space as waves. So this is your definition of what electromagnetic radiation is. They all move at the speed of light. It is a constant. So we need to like highlight this, put a big star by this. You need to know this constant. I would expect you to have this memorized. So the speed of light is in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. If this is a constant, do I worry about sig figs on this number ever? No. So we would say this has infinitely many sig figs. It's a definition. Now, technically, I'm, I'm lying to you a little bit. Here's the exact speed of light. 2, 9, 9, 7, 9, 2. 4, 5, 8 meters per second. If I rounded this number to even, let's say, like three sig figs, it's going to be 3.00 times 10 to the 8. So we're doing some rounding there, but that's just you're not typing in all nine digits into the calculator every single day. So we're saying 3.00, that is good enough. If you want to be really technical, you could go through and use that number, but I'm not going to worry about it. Speed is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. We're going to show that algebraically um, through some of the next couple problems. Frequency is the number of waves passing a given point in one second. This is measured in hertz or one over a second. Wavelength is the distance between the peaks of adjacent waves. It's measured in meters or nanometers. This is really important. You should have covered this in like pre-calc and trig if you're that far in math yet. I know you do a whole unit on like wavelength. So 
If you haven't done that yet, make sure you really look at these examples and memorize what those mean. Okay, so let's look at this picture right here. We have two different examples of electromagnetic radiation. We have wave A and we have wave B. Wave A has a very, very long wavelength. There's a big distance between the peaks. So this would be a long wavelength. Wave B has a short wavelength. The peaks are closer to each other. Let's look at how that relates to frequency. Let's pretend that this is the exact same time interval as this. I want you to go through and count how many complete waves do I have in each time interval. So here is a top, bottom. There's one, two, like maybe three, three and a half wave cycles. Let's look at wave B. We've got um, one, two, three, four, almost five wave cycles. So the one that has more wave cycles per that unit time has the higher frequency. The one with the less wave cycles has the lower frequency. So a long, a big wavelength means low frequency and a short wavelength means a high frequency. So let's analyze this chart. Which line has a greater wavelength, A or B? Raise your hand and tell me, which one has a, the bigger wavelength? Chad, A. Why, Chad? Perfect, so the peaks are further apart. Now, we were looking at the peaks. You also could look at the troughs, the low parts, or any corresponding points. Peaks makes it easy, though. Which line has greater frequency? B, good. Sam, tell me why. That's true, yes. And since they're closer together, there are there are more wave cycles. More waves per, I'll say like um, I'll say unit time. We could say second, but we don't have like a scale here. So there's more waves per per unit of time per second, per minute, per nanosecond, whatever you want to talk about. So let's look. Is this a direct or an indirect relationship? We'll try and answer question four first, maybe. So wavelength. Here we have a very high, a very long wavelength. So on wave A, I have a high wavelength. What's the frequency like, though, in comparison to B? Low. Good. So this would be what um, wave A shows. Let's look at wave B. Wave B has a very low or very short wavelength, but it has a very high frequency. This relationship is always true. So when one is up, the other is down. When one is down, the other is up. What type of relationship is that for math class? Direct or indirect? If it was direct, they both would do the same thing. Indirect, there we go. So this is indirect. Good. I think Tessa was whispering the right answer. So basically indirect means when one goes down, the other goes up and vice versa. Key points from the first page, you need to memorize the speed of light. You need to memorize the definition of frequency and wavelengths. So let's flip to the next page. Okay, no, be careful when using your calculator. Um, if you have like a TI-85 or one of those series, make sure you're using the EE button um, or maybe you have an exponent button on a different scientific calculator. Use caution and parentheses if you're doing times 10 to the caret because my classroom calculators do not like that and it throws off the whole order of operations. You're going to get the wrong answer every single time. If you do have the EE button, that EE button literally means times 10 to the power. That's supposed to be a little caret. So, for example, on your PI calculator, if you typed in like 2.5, the button says EE, but only one E will show up, 2.5 E8, this is what you literally would type into your calculator. Here is what your calculator will read. It will read 2.5 times 10 to the eighth power. So I would just take a second, if you have a TI-85 or something else out, try that. It's probably a second function and it'll say, capital E, capital E, you only hit it once and one E shows up, that's correct. And if you hit enter, it will probably report back 2.5 like times 10 to the 8. I'm going to pause it for a second. Okay, guys, now that you've played with your calculator, what's new? It's a science joke. Um, eventually, you will tell me that new is equal to C over lambda. 
So here's your actual equation. So your equation is, um, let's see, C equals lambda nu. That probably doesn't mean that much to you right now. But if I put this into words, it means the speed of light, the speed of light is equal to lambda, which is the wavelength, times the frequency. I'll also put this in terms of units for you. So C is always the speed of light, lambda is always wavelength, frequency is always new. The speed of light is going to be an answer in meters per second. Wavelength will always be in meters, and frequency is always in the unit one over a second. So if you look, does the left of the equation equal the right when I look at it unit wise? Yeah, meters over a second. There's one kind of fancy thing you need to know. An old dead guy named Hertz, he said, I discovered Hertz. Well, it's frequency. I'm going to rename the unit one over a second after myself. Not like the rental cars, like an old guy who said, we need to make this more complicated. So Hertz is one over a second. That's just something you have to deal with. Sorry. Um, if you like the triangle, just make sure you know how to use it. So C is lambda nu. Lambda is C over nu. And nu is C over lambda. So if I see you in the hallway, I say, hey, what's nu? You're going to reply back, C over lambda. Well done. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple example problems. I want you to show all of your work on every single step, just like you would in math class, show all of your units, and we will be rounding for sig fig at the end of this problem. Um, I will set up the problem, then pause and give you some time to work through it on your own calculator, and then we'll come back and check it. So I'm going to try and color code everything. I don't know if this makes sense or not, but I'm going to try it. I'm always going to write the speed of light um, C in black. I'm going to write lambda wavelength in red, hopefully. And I'm going to write new in blue. This new blue rhymes. So we'll see if that works out. So here's our first example problem. If the frequency is 9.98 times 10 to the negative 4 hertz, hertz, so frequency, that is new, I need to find the wavelength in meters, and that's going to be lambda. So let's start with our equation. Always start with the original equation. C is equal to lambda times new. I will be giving you a point on the test for writing your original equation. Are we rearrange and solve, or are we plug in, then rearrange and solve kind of people? No, no strong feelings. Okay. So let's plug in what we know. First of all, do we know what C is? Yes. Yes. We always know what C is. Go back. What is C? Speed of light. It is a constant. Speed of light will always be this number. So 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That does not change. So we're going to plug in that first thing that we know. We know that C, the speed of light, is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's going to be equal to lambda. Now, do I know what lambda is? No, that's what I'm solving for. Times the frequency, which I am told is 9.98 times 10 to the negative 4th hertz. What could I write instead of hertz? Good, 1 over a second. Perfect. So I'm going to pause it now. I want you to take some time, rearrange and solve, and report your answer back with the correct number of sig figs, which, looking at my input, how many sig figs are in my given measurement? Good. There's three sig figs here. So I want your final answer rounded to three sig figs. Okay, here's what you should have got for your calculator answer. 3.00601 times 10 to the 11th meter per second divided by 1 over a second. That's a lot. We need to round it for sig figs. So 1, 2, three sig figs look to the right. So my final answer is going to be lambda equals 3.01 times 10 to the 11th. Now this is funny right here. If you go back to your algebra identity, divided by one over a second, isn't that really the same thing as a meter per second times a second? Yes, that's the same thing. That will cancel. So you will get lambda equals 3.01 times 10 to the 11th meters. So I'm running out of time on the video right now. That is your first example problem. I will have some more videos going through the next example problems for you to watch later. Use your calculators.